Thanks, everybody, for joining. We'll get started at the top of the hour here. All right, we'll get started. Hello, thanks again for joining. My name is Rachel. I'm on the marketing team that's helping to support today's event. Uh, before we get started, just want to let you know that we are recording this session today, and we will have the chat and the Q&A window open and available throughout today's session. So if you have any questions that arise while our presenters are sharing um, some thought leadership content, please feel free to pop those into the Q&A. We have dedicated time at the end of today's session to answer those questions. If we run out of time and can't answer your question, we'll be sure to reach out to you one-on-one -on -one to get any questions you have um, answered. So with that, I'll, I'll hand it over to Steve, who's going to kick us off today. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, everyone. My name is Steve Wynn. I am with the Viva Engage product and engineering team here at Microsoft. I lead our customer experience team, and I want to welcome you all. Thank you for taking some time and uh, having interest in this discussion today. Uh, we uh, all are all here likely because uh, the news recently that uh, Meta is retiring their workplace product, and we just wanted to uh, bring folks together just to educate you a little bit on some of the evolution of of, uh, you know how we've how we've brought uh, you know Yammer into Engage, and uh, for those of you that are considering a change to uh, to Viva Engage, we'd love that opportunity to learn from you, and for you to learn from us. And and really, we brought some uh, subject matter experts together. Uh, thank you to our partners here at Swoop and WM Reply uh, for conducting the session. Really, for a lot of you that uh, are really wondering, what does it take to move from Engage or from Workplace over to Engage? Uh, you know, our partners here have had a lot of experience in doing that. Uh, and so I think you'll learn a lot uh, from them as you as you consider what this transition might look like for you. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we're going to turn it over to the team at WM Reply and Swoop. Uh, Rachel, I'll turn it over to you just to give everybody a lay of the land and what we're going to talk about today. But yeah, welcome, everybody. Thanks, thanks for joining. Thanks, Steve. So, yeah, um, as, as Steve uh, explained, we hope we've put together what will be an impactful learning experience for those of you today who are facing this transition. Um, we're going to cover off on some quick myth busting about um, employee experience platforms. Uh, then we're going to cover the migration process and how we um, help accelerate that and then cover the uh, importance of adoption and change management and ensuring your success and then the value of measuring your success with some data driven decisions. Um, for those of you who are new to us, I'll just give you a quick introduction into the Reply Network. Um, we are a global network. We're made up of over 100 specialized technology and consulting companies, and we partner with cu customers across industries and sectors to provide end-to-end uh, -end services. We have a strong ecosystem of hyperscale partnerships like Microsoft um, that keep us on the front forefront of innovation within areas of AI, digital experience, business transformation, cybersecurity, process automation, data, and much more. Um, so this global network is uniquely positioned to bring together deep industry expertise and extensive te technological know-how um, with the global scale and local agility to help you build a competitive advantage and transform the way that you do business. Um, we have experience delivering projects globally for some of the world's leading brands. We work across industries and are trusted by large in enterprises around the world. Um, some of our oldest customers like Vodafone remain our largest customers today. So with that out of the way, I'm going to hand it over to Kai, who's going to kick off um, the agenda today. Yeah, hello everyone. My name is Kai Kea, and I'm a co-founder and CEO of Swoop Analytics. And we've actually been working with um, with Workplace. Uh, those of you who've been around for a long time, you might recall what's called uh, um, what's called Facebook for Work, right? When it first started, uh, and I was actually in San Francisco for the very first Workplace Park Conference uh, back in I think it was 2017. Um, we do analytics uh, and we analyze things that are happening on Workplace and, and on Viva Engage. Uh, and for the last 10 years, we've been doing that and we've been writing benchmark reports, uh, data driven benchmark reports. And I think that puts us in a, in a pretty unique position to compare uh, what the two platforms are actually delivering. And um, when we first did this uh, back in 2018, uh, I think I can say that workplace uh, came off to a flying start, a really impressive platform. But what has happened in the last few years is that, well, um, 
the team over at that used to be Yammer now we make age. Well, they've certainly been uh, picking up their pace. So when we look at the comparison today, and remember, this is not a feature comparison, but we are focusing more on the outcomes of what the platforms are delivering. So we're looking at a, a, a bunch of different metrics areas. Uh, replies to post uh, really tells us how good people are at communicating on the platform. And you can see it's a tie. Uh, Two-way relationships is something that's so important for all of us that are um, using these platforms for community building and for internal communications. Um, so having, you can see that it's slightly ahead actually for Viva Engage. Um, and you can see many of the others here, uh, they are very, um, they're very similar. Um, some of them where Viva Engage is a little bit ahead and some of them with Workplace are a little bit ahead. Well, I think one of the key takeaways here is that there's really not that much difference between the two. Um, I'm not talking about features, and I have been as much in love with Workplace as many of you of the calls have been today. Um, and we've also been very active for a number of years on, on Viva Engage. And when you look at what the, as I said, what the outcome of what they're actually doing, it becomes a bit hard to tell them apart. Uh, to tell them apart. So for those of you that are wondering whether or not Workplace can actually be as good as Viva Engage. I'd like to give you some reassurance today that we think that is actually something you can do. Now, even though the platform can do it, doesn't mean that it will happen for you, of course, because it all comes down to the culture of your organization and how you use the platform. But based on benchmarking, many companies, million of data points, we can tell you with a pretty high degree of certainty that it is possible for you to achieve the same kind of outcomes that you've had on Workplace with Viva Engage. And that's what we're going to explore in this webinar today. We're going to help you figure out how can you move from one to the other. So I'll hand back to, to Dublin Reply, and uh, they're going to take you through how we can actually do that. Thank you, Kai. Um, so, how can you move from Workplace to Viva Engage technically? So, here at WM, uh, we have a migration process that we've been uh, following in the past five, six years now with our tool that help us uh, or help our customers move their content from Workplace, but also from other social network uh, enterprise tools to Viva Engage. And our migration process or our project always start with uh, a discovery phase. And that will include the technical part, but also the, the, the adoption and change management part. So I'm going to uh, focus uh, now on the technical side. And uh, my uh, colleague, Kathleen, uh, will uh, talk about the adoption and change management side uh, later on today. So for the technical project uh, or for the technical migration, we start our project with a planning phase, so the discovery that will include a planning phase where it will allow us to capture the right content for migration. I'll, I'll talk about it in, in a minute, but obviously the idea here is not to bring everything uh, as some of the content might be very old or not really important to keep to, to keep and migrate to Viva Engage. The scope of the migration will have an impact on the timeline, how long the migration will will last, the costs as well, but also we don't want to be bringing old content that nobody is interested in. So during that discovery phase, we will be looking at your content. We have um, scripts that we can run, that we can get, can give us very detailed insights on the usage of our groups, uh, the active groups, active users, the relevant uh, content, but also from your side, you're going to tell us which Content is a business business critical content that needs to be kept, like live videos for events, etc., or content that is less important. So we'll be able to work together to capture that right content, and also you'll be able to to um, have different rules. So, for example, you can have groups where you bring everything because it's all important. You can have groups that you bring less content, maybe the last six months, maybe the last year. So we can all work together to define that uh, scope. 
uh, during that discovery phase, so that planning phase, we'll also be looking at the technical side. So there's some technical prerequisites. Our tool is an Azure based tool, so we need an Azure subscription. So there's a, a couple of technical prerequisites that we need to go through and make sure that it's all aligned and uh, we'll be deploying the tool on your um, environment so that the, the content will never leave your environment. Very important from a security point of view during the migration. So everything stay within your environment, within your Azure, and we'll be performing as well a proof of concept where we'll be migrating a couple of content from Workplace five, six groups with some of the content to Viva Engage for us to validate the technical setup and the technical cover configuration, but also for you to see and look uh, and how the content will be migrated with the slight limitation that the tool or the platform uh, might uh, allow. After that, when we have all the information and we have all the scope and the technical uh, side is all confirmed, we move to the production migration when we'll be operating the migrated content from Workplace to Viva Engage for a standard migration. We also can help mig migrate some of the content to Teams, to SharePoint, to OneDrive, depending on the requirement. You might want to archive some of the content and not bring everything to Viva Engage. We can help you do that, etc. So all the requirements, obviously, the discovery phase will go through it and make sure that it's all captured. So I am going to move to the next slide. So this is just a slide that give you an overview on the tool. So we have as WM in a built in in house tool, as I said, is an Azure based tool. And the tool will allow you to migrate everything related to a community or a group in workplace. What I mean by a group is so the group, the description of the group, the members, the admins, the the posts, the comments, the attachments that are attached to uh, a group, but also the likes and other type of, of information when there is a uh, type of post like announcements, polls, etc. And as I said at the beginning, the tool does not only include workplace, but it also includes other social network uh, uh, tools such as Chatter or Jive, but also Viva Engage to Viva Engage in the case of uh, a tenant acquisition or ten tenant to tenant migration or a group mi merge, etc. So the tool can cover them all. Um, so this is uh, just some of uh, the latest migration that we've done uh, for Workplace. Uh, some numbers, as you can see here, with the, some clients that we've done migration lately. So Interim is an interesting one, as it's one that required uh, archiving. So the migration was actually they only migrate three months of content for around 20 communities because they didn't want to start empty and fresh in Viva Engage, but we did archive the rest of the, the content for GDPR uh, in a SharePoint site where we kept all the posts and the comments uh, in a CSV files, but also the attachment in zip files that are linked to the different groups for people to be able to access them if they need to as an archive. Um, I'm going to move now to uh, this is uh, a diagram, a very high level diagram to explain how the migration tool works. So migration tool deployed on an Azure subscription. The Azure subscription, we always recommend and advise to use the customer Azure subscription. If you do, you do not have one, you can spin off one for the, the migration time and you can delete it at the end. But it's very important because it, in that uh, in this case, the the data would never leave your environment. So first phase, we export the content from Workplace, they export the content that is within the scope of the migration that we've discussed during discovery. Any content you're not interested in, we just leave it behind and it will be deleted when the Workplace uh, will be uh, disabled for, for your users. We move all the content to Azure and we, as a second phase, we import that same content from the database in Azure to Viva Engage. We do that first during the proof of concept uh, as the beginning of the project and obviously the production migration later. I have here some examples. I don't know how uh, if it's very clear for you, it's very small, but it's it's just some examples of content that is migrated from Workplace to Viva Engage. So on the left side is the post in Workplace. On the right side is the migrated post in Viva Engage. You can see here that the membership or the ownership of the post is kept. Oliver also, L also posted in Workplace. 
the post is m m mapped to his account in, in Viva Engage, if uh, you're in your case, you, you, the users are using the exact same email address or account to log in to both would be no problem. If for some reason some of the users might have different accounts in, in Office 365, we can also accommodate that. We just need uh, a mapping list uh, of your users saying that user A in Workplace is, needs to be mapped to user B. The content of the post is migrated as you can see, the links, the comments and the likes and also the attachment. Um, here is just another example where you can see some uh, hashtag that are kept as well and the links. And in my third example, I wanted to just um, talk about this one a little bit more where if a user that uh, have posted in Workplace have left the company or uh, does not have an account in Office 365, um, we can still migrate their content. And in this case, we migrate the content to uh, a, a historical user account. So an account that you can create, a service account that you can create, you can give it a display name that you want, historical user, former employee, uh, or in different languages if, you, if you're from different countries. And uh, we migrate the content of that person and map it to that user as you can see here and we keep the original name on the top of the message. There is some limitations uh, that are coming with the migration the, mainly because either it's, uh, it's a limitation coming uh, from the case that the feature does not exist in Viva Engage or if it's a technical limitation at the moment during the APIs, as these are the, we're using APIs to, to perform the migration. So one of them, as you can all already see on some of the example I've been showing, is the timestamp. So at the moment, we cannot change the timestamp of the post when they migrated, um, and the, the timestamp of the post will be the day of the migration, but we keep the original uh, timestamp as a text message on the top of the post, as you can see here. This is, I would say, the main limitation. Uh, it is, uh, we are working on it on the background with Microsoft at the moment, trying to find a way of, of changing it. Hopefully that will be um, fixed very quickly, but at the moment, or how the, stool, the tool is standing at the moment, this is our biggest, I would say, limitation. There is other limitations that are mainly, as I said, feature that does not exist in, in, uh, in Viva Engage, like locations and knowledge base and things like that. But what we usually do is during the, the discovery phase, we'll go through your, your content in Workplace, see what type of features you are using. If you are using, for example, knowledge based and uh, you would want to keep that content, we can work with you and maybe moving it to SharePoint or a different platform if you wish to. So we'll go through these limitations. We'll give you a very detailed document that we have as well with lots of examples that can highlight all the limitation and we can work together to see which one uh, we can uh, mitigate or find a workaround. So this is uh, as basically how we run these migration project. Uh, project. This is just uh, another overview from what I've already explained. So technical migration projects always start with, us, with the discovery and planning phase where we go through, we'll have different workshops, work with you on the scope, uh, make sure that the technical uh, side is all, uh, all configured and set uh, and all the settings are done, perform a proof of concept and we move to the production migration. You might have a question about uh, what is the 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 time uh, the timelines and how long that migration will will take, but also uh, for how long uh, Workplace or Viva Engage would be um, available for users. That would really depend on your scope and how many items you have. And when I say items, it's mainly the number of comments, posts, and attachment. And that's why that discovery phase is very important because we can go through that calculate your scope and that will tell us uh, how long. So a typical migration, just to give you a very quick answer to that, is uh, the, the discovery phase for a standard migration will uh, be like around maybe four weeks uh, and depending on how uh, quick you are available for the workshops, etc. For a production migration, a medium side migration uh, would last between two to eight weeks, I would say. How long the Facebook 
a workplace or if engage will be disabled that will depend on how what's your usage we can do an initial export initial import and we can do delta as well we minimize as as much as possible the downtime um so that's it from the technical migration um i will pass now to my colleague caitlin for the adoption side amazing thank you so much um yeah it's a really incredible really powerful tool um but there is sort of another aspect to doing these types of migration which is the really importance of adoption change management so we're going to talk a little bit about what ACM is, what can happen if you don't invest um, on the people side of change. So we'll go through our approach, how we do it, some of the pillars that we keep in mind for Viva Engage, and some things to consider when we're talking about a migration from a uh, workplace looking specifically to Viva Engage. So specifically, what is change management? Uh, overall, it's a methodology backed up by research and data that really looks at the people side of change. So for an organization to see the benefits and value of a change implementation, it requires every individual to make a conscious effort to change their behaviors, their attitudes, or maybe even their ways of working. So when it comes to how we then work with you on that, change is never straightforward. Uh, I sometimes wish it was, but uh, we like to plan then from the start how we can support you through this change. So we start with understanding your current modern workplace landscape and defining your priorities. Um, you know, who's gonna mention that sort of discovery phase. We would do this in line with that technical discovery, uh, making sure that we understand where you want to go, some of your business and organizational goals, and develop that into a, a really bespoke strategy. We also listen to employees as well as the project team to sort of fully define requirements and new ways of working as well. Then when it comes to executing the change, so when we execute the change, we follow the core tenets of change management outlined by the ADCAR methodology developed by ProSci, who is the gold standard in change management. And so by integrating these core tenants, we can set the course for a really successful and long term change. We then measure success and gather feedback throughout to see how we can improve during and then continue supporting people um, long after our engagement ends. And of course, ensuring that we are on target to reach the uh, return on investment. And then, of course, when it comes to change sustainability, all of this will help set you up for long-term success. We're looking to embed new beliefs, behaviors, and best practices into your organization. And we're really able to do this by zooming in on the individual user journey. So there is a key consideration when you migrate from workplace to engage for that user journey, uh, as workplace and engage aren't necessarily a like for like swap. In many ways, as we saw Kai talking about earlier, um, there are incredible similarities. There are some ways in which engage might be a little bit ahead, but some of the uh, specifics might mean that we might be using both engage and teams. So the majority of colleagues will be using workplace as an enterprise social network, but there may still be a number of groups and teams who are using it to collaborate, share documents and work together. So in those cases, we would want to redirect them to teams instead of Viva Engage. So again, this is really why it's important to consider change management very carefully as we move people to start utilizing two apps instead of just sort of the one. So how do we then encourage that behavior? Well, underpinning this approach to this transition is that change methodology, ADCAR. It stands for Awareness, Desire, Knowledge, Ability, and Reinforcement. It's a really structured way to roll out change for an individual, which you can then use to scale for a business or a global organization. As I said, it can be scaled up or down, and then it breaks uh, change into five manageable elements. And everything we do and deliver helps align an organization or group of people through this core methodology. We start over here with awareness and desire. We want people to see, hear, and know what's coming, as well as you know, have the desire to use it. 
Uh, from the initial discovery work that we'll do, we'll be able to unpick key messages that are going to help drive awareness of Viva Engage throughout the right teams and channels. And we'll make sure that message lands with both the content and the preferred senders. So this is often a message from the CEO, a top-down communication, you know, one that users will make sure they open and read. And we'll define what the key motivations are for the different end users broken into various personas. People need first to hear about the change, but they also really need to link the reason why it's coming to something that will benefit them personally. It's the what's in it for me, or the with them, as we like to say, because that rolls off the tongue. We then, of course, move into knowledge and ability. So we develop and tailor training strategies to provide the right people with the right information and knowledge so that they can move through the change with confidence. We create training materials and sessions that build capability and common understandings of the tool and its use across leadership, across change champions, community owners, and end users. We want to make sure that the sessions we deliver are easy to digest, that we give people really easy takeaways to get started, and that any materials or assets we create can be shared widely across the organization. And as a typical project unfolds, we'd aim to get everyone's awareness of the change, you know, get excited for its prospects, and ready and able to use it before go live. So before we launch Viva Engage, we'd want those communications, those core trainings and adoption pieces uh, to already be in place. If they're not really in place, people may know it's coming. They may have that awareness, but they probably won't know how to use it properly when it lands. That may lead to some frustration. So once we get all those pieces in place, anything beyond go live is then what we call the reinforcement bucket. So we build this into our plans to ensure that Viva Engage has really sustainable and lasting effects. We don't just want to throw a new tool over the fence. We want to make sure that long after our engagement, organizations have the tools to increase adoption and usage levels over time. And we bring this methodology to life with some key pillars here for change. So uh, the first uh, pillar that I have is stakeholder engagement. These are our key sponsors, our change makers, our influencers, and we leverage their position with migrating to Viva Engage. So how can we engage and encourage leaders to start using the tool so that others will follow suit? That's a really core position to be in, to see leadership active in Viva Engage. But we also use a change network. So we either tap into existing networks or we can build up champions for change. Uh, as you know, we cannot directly one on one connect with thousands of colleagues, but we can leverage the power and influence of a really engaged change network. Now we're bringing the stakeholder engagement, some of that top down communication, as well as the change network. So bringing in then boots on the ground, sort of grassroots communication as well. And then when it comes to those communications, uh, the communications that we draft are always exciting, but they're to the point and they aim to resonate with the end user, that with them, right? Why is Viva Engage going to make my working life better? Of course, we use visual design here. We have an amazing creative team who love to create bold campaigns, um, you know, with visual themes that tie throughout the communication, through the training materials, the um, the email banners, assets that are available on Viva Engage. It really gives the launch a true identity. And then, of course, we have training. And as I mentioned, there are a lot of ways to train people. We've got quick start guides, one pagers, virtual webinars, in-person workshops, you name it, we cover it. So we understand the methodology, right? The importance of change management, how we drive the change, but it is still really key to understand, um, you know, how we get there. So first we have that discovery. Again, understanding those personas, those ways of working, running in tandem with technical discovery, because that way our teams can work together to really create that whole picture. From our planning, we're aligning with your teams on key messages, building out that why, planning our content uh, of the engagements, and really critically understanding our success metrics to determine that ROI. 
right? Because what is kind of the value of the change if it isn't successfully adopted? Readiness, of course, involves the stakeholders, the champions that we talked about to spread that awareness, to help communicate that desire. We're also training up those community owners to understand the migration, both kind of technically and, you know, in an adoption way, understanding their roles, helping to get those users excited. And then we have our launch really moving into the full force of the campaign and training to provide that holistic support to end users. And we're setting everyone up at the organization for success with those reinforcement strategies going far beyond our engagement. A lot of that sounds really, you know, theoretical, but I do want to point out a couple of really successful use cases here, uh, speaking specifically to a workplace to um, engage migration. So the first one, uh, a really, really successful launch at ASOS. So the challenge was that workplace was really underused. So uh, newer employees at one point didn't even know what it was when they joined. Um, they wanted to migrate to Yammer. You know, as we all know, Yammer has evolved into what Viva Engage is today. So this was when it was still considered Yammer, uh, but they wanted to position it as a space to bring everyone together to connect and learn and share knowledge and experiences. So our approach was to align our campaign with the ASOS values, uh, to engage a champion network as well as senior leadership. We built up community manager and champion training, again, to, to marry the top-down and bottom-up communication, leveraged a really fun creative campaign, and we even were able to have a launch day uh, on site there, uh, as you can see in that image. Um, so a lot of uh, great success there. We saw over 1,700 logins on launch day specifically. There were over 50 active communities. Um, it became a primary communication channel as well, which again will help drive that engagement over time and immediately had 65 um, active users in there. So um, really 65%, excuse me, active users. So really good engagement right off of the bat thanks to an exciting um, what's in it for me driven campaign. And then another case study I want to highlight, uh, and you know, Husna talked about this a little bit earlier, was that interim migration. Uh, and I wanted to talk about this as well because, of course, this was super similar um, to what many of you might be going through right now. So, uh, you know, interim wanted to migrate off of workplace because, you know, they weren't going to be renewing their licenses. They had a specific time frame then they were they were going to butt up against. So it was really critical to get on the ground up ahead of that time frame and do this planning and discovery work to make sure that we did a successful launch. So challenge, of course, they had not only that license renewal time frame, but they also had over the 1500 groups in workplace, massive scrawl, massive um, archiving approach. So as we heard earlier, we wanted to start on not necessarily a clean slate, but on a refreshed state. So bringing over the really valuable content, archiving what we didn't need, um, you know, which is a great sort of case study for that's a really good best practice, especially if you've been on a platform for a long time. Uh, we trained up the community managers so they felt really successful. And in the end, uh, you know, a handful of those communities were migrated, uh, but we also brought over the six months of content. So ensuring that it was fresh and relevant, but not feeling like people were joining a completely empty platform. So, a couple of great examples there. Again, you know, we've done a ton of Viva Engage migrations, many of them across various platforms, but several across workplace specifically. So we're very in tune with what what type of content you might need to be migrating. But uh, again, to talk a little bit about timelines, uh, many of you might be wondering when you need to start considering the move. And generally, we would recommend uh, about four months to cover this comprehensive approach. So two months of that will be preparation and then the other two months for delivery and launch. Again, it's in tandem with the technical approach. So everything would be timed and lined up. Um, it's not like we have to do the technical first and then the ACM. They all really come together at the same time. Um, and the key here right now is that we have a good time. It's better to start this process now than to leave it to later, to rush off, to get off workplace at the last minute. You're going to end up with a much more haphazard state or again, butt up against other complications like 
holiday seasons, other company events, uh, you know, changes that may contribute to change or communication fatigue. And this process can be adjusted based on your needs and is really just a representative of a, of a typical approach covering sort of what we've discussed. So you're right, just to recap, you know, our practice is really rooted in our successes and the best practices and methodologies. There's, of course, much more to go over here, um, but I also don't want you to just kind of take my word for it. I do want to pass it over to Kai to be able to discuss a lot of those data driven success metrics when we are considering these types of migrations. Thanks so much, Caitlin. Really appreciate it. I'm going to take control and uh, see if I can elegantly move to uh, to the next slide. So uh, there were particularly three areas uh, where you can use data uh, to make the transition uh, even even faster and even more efficient. And it ties in so very nicely with what uh, Caitlin has just been through. Uh, the first point I put up here is about finding influencers. How do you actually go about that and why is it important? I'm going to show you uh, how we do that uh, with Swoop Analytics. Um, and they're really important, as Caitlin was saying, because we have to find a way of engaging them um, during the uh, transition uh, and, of course, make sure that they are, uh, they are they're happy uh, once they get to the new place. The thing is that these influencers can actually be quite hard to find. Um, we know from all the benchmarking that we've done on Workplace that there is a higher proportion of private communities on Workplace than you typically see um, on Viva Engage. And I think it has to do um, some of the things that um, Caitlin said that um, that Workplace, um, when you move to Viva Engage, you'll probably see that some of those communities that would be or the groups that would be private and Workplace might uh, end up in, in, in Teams or Microsoft Teams. Uh, and then the uh, Viva communities uh, may be more the ones that are that are uh, that have public access. Um, so you might find in workplace that you have a a, a number of groups that are private, and therefore you actually don't know who those uh, influencers are. Um, so we're going to show you how you can actually use analytics to identify those influencers, so you can engage them uh, very early on. Uh, the second thing is. Um, uh, how to find the top performing groups in the workplace. Um, as uh, Houston was saying, uh, you, you may not have to migrate all the groups across to communities of workplace. You might find that you only have to do some of them, but which ones? Uh, you might do a strategic review and say these uh, groups are very important for us, but what if there are some that are really, really well performing uh, that you actually want to move across as well because they deliver value to the business? We've done benchmarking for the last 10 years, and we know there's a set of metrics that's really going to tell us whether or not a group is a uh, what people consider a high performing group. And we validated that by talking about the groups to find what kind of business outcomes they deliver. So that's going to be really important finding what those uh, groups are, workplace. As I said, many of them could be private, and therefore you may not even know uh, exactly who they are or, or what they do. The last point um, is about benchmarking senior leaders. Um, I'm going to show you some examples of the kind of behaviors that we really know is associated with uh, good collaborative and good communication practices, uh, both on workplace and also on, on Viva Engage. Uh, and wouldn't it be nice if you can see how well your leadership team and, and really critical stakeholders are doing that in workplace and you can ensure that they continue to do that on, on Viva Engage. So let's have a look at uh, what some of those uh, things, what they look like in, in real life. So I've got some screenshots here uh, of Swoop. And um, so uh, at the moment, you can actually run uh, Swoop for Workplace, and we're in the App Store, and you can run that, and then also at the same time, kick it off in, in Viva Engage. And therefore, you can compare whether or not the leaders you have on workplace, how much they're performing, what they're doing, and then see how they're doing that over on Viva Engage. You can see that's a one little chart there I've got of uh, uh, of a, uh, a person that says engage, and that's a little five star ranking. And you might be able to see um, that uh, you can see that it says uh, with a little blue uh, horizontal bars, it says how many posts the person has made, how many replies, and how many reactions. 
And the ratio between these three are actually really important. And some of the behaviors that we want to see less of are leaders that are, well, maybe not be posting at all, or maybe they are only posting, but they never reply and they never react. Um, actually, we uh, strongly encourage that uh, leaders, actually everyone, adopt what we call the one, two, three rule. And that means that every time you do one post, you do two replies and three likes or three reactions. And that's to get the balance right in the way that you are interacting with people. Uh, my parents always said uh, there's a reason why you have one mouth and two ears. Um, and the only way you can really show as a leader that you are listening is by replying and by hitting the like on one of the reaction uh, buttons. So we want to make sure that people are doing that. And if they are really good engaging in conversations, we should also see what you're seeing in the little gray bars. You should see replies and reactions coming back to those senior leaders. So let's see what they're actually doing today, whether they need some coaching and some training and actually adopting much better behaviors than what they're doing today, or at least continue what they are doing. Now, uh, influential people you're seeing over on the left-hand side. Uh, what we normally do, you can find these for all the groups in workplace, and you can go into them and see who are those uh, influencers that you have at the moment. And influencers determined by how big the conversation network that they engaged in. So when you interact on workplace and you reply and you post and you react, you start to build up a network of people not just followers. And you can actually see there are two columns there. There is a people engaged column, and then there's a follower column. And you can see the numbers in them uh, for these people is dramatically different for some of them. Like the one on the second uh, row has got you know, 13 followers, but a network of 284 people. So they are actually people that are really out there, people you want to engage, maybe involve into when Caitlin talk about the champions network, invite them into this uh, special place because they were very committed to workplace. Um, and we want to make sure that they uh, get ex as excited about being engaged as they have been uh, on workplace. I also have, uh, uh, you can see, uh, top performing groups on workplace at the bottom. So we can uh, go in and, and do some data-driven uh, comparisons of all the groups. So it's not just about how active they are, but you may can see some of the columns. One of the columns says curiosity. And in there we measure how good, how many, how often people ask questions in the group. And actually asking questions is one of those characteristics that is associated with very high response rate. Our research has actually found that if you ask a question, you get 150% more replies than when you don't. So wouldn't it be nice if you can find out what are the groups that have these special characteristics? Uh, uh, they're uh, in there it's around how good they are at asking questions. Uh, you might recall from the first slide that I showed today uh, about two-way relationships. How good are we are really at how conversation in these community in the communities on on the on the groups on workplace. So we want to see those really high-performing communities continue their good practices over on even engage and without data. You're really flying by, flying blind, and uh, we would love to help you measure where you are at the moment, uh, help you find your influencers, benchmark your senior leaders, and get the right groups across to really engage, and then let them excel there. And uh, it really helps when you can follow them uh, on their journey. Now, uh, let's head back. I'm not sure that we have a, a couple more slides, or is it time for Q&A? It's uh, it's time for Q. I think um, you were gonna maybe review um, a, a special offer for attendees, and then then we'll do some Q and A. I should say that if you are interested in in running Swoop for Workplace at the same time as you're running for Swoop for Read Engage, we do have an offer which is our two two for one offer, so you can run both products for the same price. Awesome. Okay. Thanks. Hi. So um, as you mentioned, we're now now going to move to, to Q&A. So I'll start with some of the questions. I've seen a lot of activity in the Q&A chat already. So appreciate that, everyone. But um, please feel free to continue adding your questions 
as you have them um, for our presenters today. So as we surface them, I'll leave this on screen with a couple of resources that might help answer some of the questions. But I know it looks like um, Chris and Buddy had a lot of questions around the content migration. I see Steve, you had already been answering some of their questions, but just to make sure we cover off on that. Um, Husna, do you want to uh, just yes. re-highlight the content um, migration possibilities of the tool? Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I've, I've answered some of the questions, but basically I just want to make it clear on what's the tool is uh, including and what's in scope. So I know that I think you'd had maybe some different messages from other partners, but I want to make it clear using the APIs, our tool include everything related to a group or a community. So we migrate the group, we keep the members, we keep the admins, we keep the posts, the comments and the likes and any attachment. So any image, photo, video, document that's been attached to a post is migrated. We keep the membership of the, uh, the post or the ownership of the post. So we map it to the exact same person. When the email address is similar, if you do want us to map it to different people, we can also accommodate that. We just need a mapping list saying that user A in workplace needs to be mapped to user B in, in, uh, in Viva Engage. And for any users that have left the company, we can still migrate the content by mapping to a service account that you can create or you already have. And we keep the original name uh, on top of the message. There was questions around limitations, um, and Steve, I think he, he replied on that one. The main limitation is the timestamp, as we cannot backdate the, the, the post at the moment. So the timestamp of the post will be the timestamp of the migration day, but we keep the original time on top of each post and each comment in the time zone of your choice. And so it's searchable, but also we migrate all posts in the chronological order, the exact chronological order where they've been posted in workplace. So from user experience, it looks exactly the same. I, uh, however, at the moment, we do have a backlog where the timestamp is on top of it, where we are working with Microsoft, where we're trying to find a solution for that. So Microsoft are working, we are working with them on that, and hopefully that will be ready as soon as possible, but yeah, this is just how the tools stand today. There's other limitation, and there was another question, uh, as this is obviously a limitation that is coming from, uh, it's a Microsoft limitation, and there was a question in any limitation coming from exporting the content from Workplace. There's not, I would say the main one is results of the polls, to be very exact here, is we can migrate polls, polls as as, um, as a feature exists in Viva Engage, you can create polls and you can answer them and, and, and re, uh, react around them. But as a technical limitation, the result of a poll is something that we cannot export from Workplace. Again, these are very, yeah, limitations that have very details around um, yeah, pools. And the rest of the limitation are mainly around feature that does not exist in Viva Engage. As I said, location, tagging a photo, as you can do it in Facebook today, when you can tag someone on a picture, this is a, it's a feature that does not exist in Viva Engage, so we cannot cap that tape of tags. However, the at mention on a post are migrated. Um, yeah, that's a, yeah, location is another one, and uh, um, what else? Yeah, so it, there is a small limitation like that. We do have a document that uh, very explained them. And as I said in one of the, my response, if you do want more detailed uh, presentation of the tool and we can even go through the technicality and how we deploy the tool, etc., and all the prerequisites, please reach out to either me, Kai or uh, yeah, depending on who, where you are, and uh, I'm in, in London, I'm in the UK, so I'm covering uh, Europe, but yeah, depending on, on which time zone you are, just pre please reach out and we'll be able to give you way more detail um, about the tool. Thank you, thank you. So, and, and kind of along those lines, I know it varies a little bit, but um, there was a question about a high level cost for the, the migration tool. Yeah. Um, you guys want to Again, touch on that? I, I that will depend on obviously I do have costs in pounds if you do want them in dollars etc so if for the cost maybe reach out to us uh, directly so we can give you the accurate cost depending on where you are the location where you are okay uh, Caitlin Steve anything you guys want to add there I know there's some some funding as well maybe potential yeah. there that we want to reference 
Yeah, yeah, definitely second reaching out. Um, part of that conversation will be to understand some of the current licensing that you have as well. Um, you know, if you're looking to expand some of your frontline worker licensing to enable some of that two-way conversation, which is one of the highest use cases we see for Viva Engage, there may be some opportunities to, you know, leverage some Microsoft funding there, including, you know, whether that's license-related funding or a frontline worker pilot, where we can kind of run um, um, that sort of proof of concept with a smaller pilot group to understand sort of the engagement there. So, yeah, there are some ways to, um, depending on how you are currently licensed um, and how you're reaching folks to to leverage some of what Microsoft might be willing to to offer as well. Um, there is a question uh, around locking down uh, workplace groups and what's the freeze time. So that would depend on your usage of Viva Engage Day. If you are not using Viva Engage at all or if it's already used by a part of your company. But any export phase, we do it in the background so we're not freezing uh, the access to workplace during the, the whole migration um, timeline so we'll be exporting in the background and we'll be able to do a top up deltas as well as we export the content to the database in Azure. Now once we'll be doing the import to, to, to Viva Engage as I said depending on if you're using work Viva Engage or not if you're not in that case we just do the initial export and initial import and we'll just freeze for that delta that final uh, exports that we'll need to do. This is if you go with the scenario of you're cutting Facebook uh, workplace and you're starting straight away in Viva Engage. In some cases, some companies decide to keep them both alive, live, etc. So depending really on which scenario you're going for, but with, the, with our process, we try to minimize as, as much as possible the, the freeze period. And I would say not more than five days, even less depending on your scope. Okay, thank you. And I think there was another question. Um, in your experience, are companies doing a hard rollout where everyone is migrated and transferred at once, or are some going for a more gradual migration? I know Allison already commented there. Thank you for that. But maybe you guys want to touch on it as well. Yeah. So it it depends on the situation. As uh, the, this the project the the technical migration project I've been cross and maybe I'll let Caitlin talk about more of like a, a rollout uh, when Viva Engage is, is rolled out within a company. It's the, the migration I've been cross so far, especially from workplace are uh, because of the uh, the licensing ending within workplace or that it's not re there's no renewal. So it's usually a hard rollout where we try to migrate the content at once. Yeah, but again, it depends really on uh, how you want to you you want to have your your rollouts, but also the timeline and the time that you have uh, with with the this, the exact situation with workplace being um, uh, retiring next year. It doesn't really give us much time um, mm -hmm. for most more more of a soft launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. I think the the time frame and the sort of switching or non renewal of licenses tends to put folks in a place where they need to do a hard cut over. Um, so again, it is best to just start starting that process and how to give yourself a little bit more time um, to to be able to do really thorough sort of discovery and alignment there. Um, but we have seen success with folks who uh, are then in a position where they say, OK, maybe we have several months to a year and we are interested in understanding how we're reaching our frontline population we are interested in uh you know how we're, how we're then addressing folks who may not have previously had an m365 license but were able to you know access us through different means um so there are opportunities there to do that sort of proof of concept that pilot um and then lean into a larger rollout those often uh, lend themselves to be uh, super users or a natural change champion group as well when it comes to doing a full scale rollout. So um, more of sort of a, a build upon a, a pilot or a small proof of concept as opposed to then feeling like you're doing the launch twice over as well. Awesome. All right, it looks like that's all of our questions. If you guys have any more, please feel free to put them in the chat. Well, I'll give you a few more minutes. Um, just want to draw your attention to the resources there on screen. Um, we've got a couple blog posts and FAQ documents just to help you answer some additional questions you might have, as well as contact in information for myself, Husna and Kai. Um, we, as you can see, are kind of 
collectively coming together in a large partner group to help everyone with this migration that that's looming. Um, so if you are in the Americas, I should have put a, a Canada flag there as well. Sorry, but if you're in the America of US or Canada, please feel free to reach out to me um, and I can help you coordinate a meeting with one of uh, one of our consultants. If you're in Europe, please reach out to Husna and then Kai, of course, is in Australia um, if anybody happens to be up as late as him right now. Um, but uh, please feel free to reach out to us if you want to get um, a one on one consult together about the challenges you're specifically facing or your concerns. We'd love to help you with that. Um, and it looks like no more questions. Well, let me see the chat. Oh, no, we got links in there. Yeah, Daniel has posted in the in the chat over there links to this as well if you're unable to click on the slides for some reason. But uh, so that concludes today's session. We'll give you guys a little bit of a time back and uh, really appreciate your um, engagement and your time. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for joining everyone. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank Thanks. you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.